Right away, if you haven't seen the first part of this presentation, I highly recommend it. Links down below, and that's the one where I define the TS parameters. In this one, we'll look at the bigger picture and build some situational awareness for when you're out there gathering specs. We'll talk about which ones matter, why they matter, and we'll identify some of the pitfalls you may encounter along the way. If you're diligent enough to plan your stereo down to a specific make and model sub, you are probably not want to settle for a hit and miss experience. Which also means that you're probably not about to shove that sub into a prefab and call it a day. That would not be diligent. The more guesswork we can eliminate, the more control we have over the most important aspect of a design, namely how it performs. But it all begins with the parameters, so if those are wrong, so is everything that follows, sheer luck notwithstanding. And that's a really uncomfortable thought to have about a build. So let's first establish the handful of parameters that most design software will actually rely on to perform the small signal math for enclosure analysis. And there's only six, so bear with me. We'll begin with the damping factors, and you want to make sure that both the electrical and the mechanical ones are present. Watch out for specs that only give you the total cube. Depending on what else is missing, you may not be able to break it back down to its essentials. On the flip side, as long as you have the electrical and the mechanical figure, you can calculate the total cube like this. Granted, you don't actually need this composite. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's just another way of looking at the overall damping. But there is a way to derive the essential cube values from other parameters. As long as you know the driver's DC resistance, the BL product, the suspension compliance, and the free air resonance, you can use this formula to solve for the electrical cue. Just be sure to enter the compliance in meters per newton, otherwise you'll be off by a decimal point or two, and I'll post all these formulas down below. To solve for the mechanical cue, the same parameters can be used, except the DC resistance should be subtracted from the peak impedance at the driver's resonant frequency, and this value is generally annotated as RES. Bear in mind, however, that you shouldn't have to do any of this roundabout math. There's also a chance that whoever designs your enclosure might not do it either. I say this as I've seen my fair share of purportedly engineered enclosures for subs with incomplete or otherwise missing parameters. Missing from the manufacturer's website, missing from any searchable website, missing from the cardboard box that the sub came in, missing from the paperwork inside that box. You get the idea. And if the figures are coming out of thin air without anyone using a woofer tester, then you're paying an engineering premium for guesswork. What can you do? Always ask for a copy of the TS parameters that your enclosure was designed for, and be wary of any apprehension surrounding that request. So, the next parameter in a handful is the free air resonance. There's really no good reason for this one to be missing, but if it is, you can still solve for it as long as you know the moving mass and the suspension compliance. Here's the formula, and again, you'll want to enter the compliance in meters per newton and the moving mass in grams. Something else that modeling software will need is the driver's DC resistance. The thing to watch out for here is nominal resistance being presented as DCR. Just as a quick refresher, nominal resistance tells you what the driver is being marketed as. Dual 2 ohm, single 4 ohm, etc. DCR tells you the actual measured value. It's generally somewhat lower than nominal and it's virtually never a whole number. So if someone tells you that your 8 ohm speaker has a DCR of 8 ohms, I'd look into that. Who knows, you may come to rely on the accuracy of that figure to solve for another one, as we already have. Finally, we need at least two data points to establish the driver's physical properties, and these can be any two of the following. The equivalent air compliance, the suspension compliance, the moving mass, or the piston area. Personally, I'd choose whichever ones are the easiest to confirm. That would be the piston area, which you can figure out with a tape measure, and the moving mass, especially if you have a recone kit laying around. Just remember that only half of the spider and half the surround factors into the assembly mass, and you can figure out the air mass with this formula. Combine the air mass and the assembly mass, and you have the moving mass. If that's not an option, you can also work it out as long as you know the free air resonance and the suspension compliance, once more in meters per newton. And there you have it. As long as you can track down these six parameters, you can rest easy knowing that you have all the figures needed for a proper enclosure simulation. Also, you can calculate all the remaining small signal parameters. My one honorable mention here would be the inductance parameter, and only if you're working on something that has to play well into the mid-base or the mid-range. Something for which you need to simulate the upper end roll-off. There is no formula that I know of to derive the inductance from other parameters, so if it's missing, and there is no impedance graph, then it's missing. Now, 
The overarching question that you might have been asking yourself this whole time is why? Why, Mr. Anderson? Why would any of this information be missing? One would assume that you can just email the company and ask for it. And if it's there for the asking, then why isn't it up on the website? Well, as it happens, not every company designs its own speakers. Certain ones commission a third-party build house or simply brand an existing design. Many of these companies specialize in sales and marketing rather than acoustics, which could explain the missing technical data, but they do make their money, courtesy of anyone who buys a speaker without knowing or caring about the very thing that defines its operation. We all know that one guy who bought a sub just because it had a big magnet. A circumstance, by the way, which doesn't really credit the TS parameters as a selling point in the eyes of the vendor. Long story short, now you get to play detective as you sift through incomplete and possibly inaccurate spec sheets. Fortunately, there's a few basic ways to spot trouble. First, imagine that your enclosure was designed to perform like this, but instead it does this. Well. What you're looking at here is the output from an enclosure housing a dual 2 ohm and then a dual 4 ohm version of the same sub. And the difference isn't always going to be this subtle. The way to prevent it entirely is to ensure that the parameters you're working with are for the exact version of the sub that's going in the box. Most manufacturers are pretty good at listing a separate set of figures for each available voice coil configuration, but it never hurts to check. You may see a woofer listed as available in a dual 2 and a dual 4 ohm configuration, but then there's only one set of parameters. That is a red flag. There's also instances where both sets of parameters are listed, but they're the exact same parameters except for the DCR. And if you understand the mathematical relationships between these figures, you know that's just plain impossible. Theoretically, the mechanical values could match, but the electrical ones will not. So if they do, that's another surefire way to tell that something isn't right. The same applies if the sub is made available with different spider options. If there isn't a separate set of parameters to account for the difference in the suspension compliance, the moving mass and mechanical damping, again, something isn't right. Anyhow, I sincerely hope that what I covered here today gives you a newfound sense of vigilance as you go to research the TS parameters for your next install, or perhaps even reevaluate your current one. Give this video a like if you found it useful, share it with someone who really needs to see it, you know the guy, subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.